Namaste, friends. I'm Heather Wiest with Love, Serve, Inspire. And today I'll be guiding you through Grounded and Grateful, All Levels Slow Flow. For today's practice, we'll be using two yoga blocks. If you do not have yoga blocks, two books about the equal size will work great. I am here to guide you, but you are always your best teacher. So please listen to your body, stay safe, and have fun. We'll begin today's practice lying down on our backs. So transitioning slowly, you're gonna roll down onto your back. Maybe you take a full body stretch. And then we're gonna be placing a bend into our knees, taking our feet as wide as the mat or to wherever is comfortable for you and knocking the knees in together. Constructive rest pose, a nice release, normally for the low back and the front of the thighs. And we're going to bring our hands to our low ribs and have it to where your middle fingers are touching. And we'll begin to deepen our breath here, those full inhalations and exhalations in and out through the nose. And notice as you inhale deeply into that belly, the middle fingers separate. And as you exhale deeply, releasing the breath, the middle fingers come to touch. It's so just a great tactile way to feel the fullness of our breath. I am grounded and grateful. I am grounded and grateful. Just allowing that to be your intention for this practice. Acknowledging what helps keep you grounded. And as we're rooted and grounded, we have more freedom to be grateful. You have any other intentions you want to bring into your practice today acknowledge those now it may be a positive affirmation a prayer or a deep heart longing a few more breaths here We're gently going to release the hands from the bottom ribs. We're going to bring our feet hip width distance apart and we're going to come into a figure four shape to open up through the outer hips. So I'm going to take my left foot and ankle and cross it over the right thigh. And you have some options here. You can stay here. I'm going to place a nice flex into that left foot. And you can take the left hand to the top of the left thigh and just give yourself a little bit of resistance here to help open up through that left outer hip. Or feel free to lift off the right foot and thread the arms behind that right hamstring. So whatever is best for your body today. Just holding here for about five full breaths, beginning to open up through that left outer hip. So as we reflect upon this attitude of gratitude, just thinking about our expressions of gratitude and thanks. And who could you encourage today with just a little bit of gratitude and thanks? Notice who comes to mind first. And just remembering to reach out to them today we all need encouragement 
even ourselves. So speaking the gratitude and thanks to ourselves as well. One more full breath here. And then we're gently going to release the hands. If you haven't hamstring, you'll ground the right foot down. We're just going to take a gentle twist. I'm bringing my arms out to the side, either palms up or down. And I'm just going to turn to the right and bring that left foot to the mat. So again, not a full deep twist, just a nice gentle opening. Few more breaths here. Noticing sensations in the body. Breathing into those tight areas. Transitioning into that ujjayi pranayama. That slight sound constriction to the back of the throat. Your breath feels like ocean waves coming in and out of shore. One more full breath here. And then we're gently going to return to center and release that left foot to the mat. Feel free to take a full body stretch or hug the knees into the chest if you need to in between sides. We're gonna take that figure four on the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift up that right foot I'm going to bring it over that left thigh. Again, you have options here. First of all, I'm flexing through that right foot. You can take the right hand and push at the very top of that right thigh to get an additional opening into the right hip. Or feel free to lift off the left foot off the mat and thread the arms left hamstring muscles. So settling in to where you'd like to hold the stretch. So as we intend to express our thanks and gratitude, just remembering that it's so beneficial if we're very specific with our thanks, if we do it with frequency, but yet a genuine heart. So as we encourage those around us, remembering to do so with our expressions, whether that be verbal or written through our body language, Another full deep breath here. And then we're gently going to release the hands if you have them behind the left hamstring. Bring the arms out to a side in the T and then we'll just be twisting to the left, bringing that right foot crazy. Just allowing yourself to get a nice opening along that right hip and gluteus medius. Inhale peace and exhale gratitude. Inhale peace and exhale gratitude. Just a great mantra to use with this theme of being grounded and grateful. No matter what the circumstances are around us, allowing ourselves to be calm, connected, centered. Bringing those full deep breaths into the sensations of the body. One more full breath. And then we're gently going to return to center. You're going to hug both knees into the chest. We're going to keep the right knee into the chest. The left leg is going to come long on the mat, a nice flex into both feet. I'm going to take the left arm underneath the right leg, underneath that hamstring, and then the right arm is going to come overhead on the mat behind me. So a nice stretch from left toes to right fingertips, and feel free to adjust that right thigh 
in the hip socket, you can bring it closer into midline or bring it out towards the body. You can give it a little rock or you can hold static. A few more breaths here, just getting a nice stretch in the inner thighs, the outer hips, long range of motion here from left toes to right fingertips. One more full deep breath. And then we'll go ahead and bring that left knee to meet the right. We'll switch sides so the left leg will come long. Nice flex into the foot. Right arm comes underneath the left thigh. Left arm overhead on the mat behind you, drawing that left knee a little bit closer into the body. So finding that nice space for you on this side. Nice full stretch from right toes to left fingertips. Staying breath connected today through your practice, the most important part of our practice. Those full inhalations and exhalations. One more deep full breath here. We'll hug both knees in towards the chest we're going to take both legs to the sky. I'm going to reach my fingertips like I'm trying to touch my toes. I'm going to go ahead and place a flex and a point with my wrist and my ankles, my hands and my feet here. Just getting a little bit of range of motion into those joints. And once you have done that a few rounds, you'll go ahead and circle in one direction, the wrist and the ankles and then reverse that direction. You might get some snap, crackle, pops here, normal. Just opening up through the joints. And then we're gonna go ahead and take the hands behind the thigh and onto the side to come up to seated, please do so. We'll go ahead and run up to seated, transitioning into tabletop position on hands and knees. So finding the tabletop, spreading those fingers wide, shoulders over the wrist, the hips over the knees, and the feet are relaxed behind you. We're coming into our cow and cat. So as you inhale, bringing the head and the heart forward, and then exhale, round through the upper back and draw the navel in towards the spine. So really try to separate vertebra by vertebra as you work your cat and cow. Notice where it's easy for you to open up through the spine and where it be, might be a little more challenging. So really making that effort of feeling each and every vertebra on your spine. Full deep inhales and exhales. A few more rounds here. Feel free to add in any additional movement that feels good for your body. Just increasing our range of motion as we open up through the spine, creating space and length. And then finding neutral tabletop. We're going to take the right toes back on the mat and get a nice flex into that right foot. The frontal hip points lift, so you feel a nice stretch even into that front of the right leg. The head is nice and relaxed, releasing through the jaw, and you're pressing into every area of the hand. We're going to cross the right foot over the left, push more into the right hand, and gaze over that left shoulder. So feel the stretch now all along the right side of the body as you continue to draw that navel into the spine, supporting through your lower back. One more full breath. And then we'll inhale back to center, grounding the right foot and the right knee back down to the mat. We'll inhale the left toes back. They're grounding into the mat. A nice flex into the foot so you feel that stretch along the foot, the Achilles, up through that left leg. Frontal hip points lift, so engaging that lower belly, pushing the hands away, but the head and neck and jaw are super relaxed, just gazing down towards the top of the mat. So get some freedom into the back of the neck. And then we'll cross that left foot over the right leg, push more into the left hand as you gaze over that right shoulder. So now feel the stretch all along that left side body. Again, continue to engage the low belly, Full deep breath here. And then returning that left knee and foot down to the mat. 
we're gonna be coming up onto our knees, preparing for gate pose. I'm gonna extend the right leg out, right along where my hip is on the side and just gripping it down into the floor or the mat. We're gonna inhale the arms up and overhead. And as you exhale, that right arm will lightly touch the leg and the left arm extending through the sky. So I feel a nice stretch all along that left side. Should feel really, really good. Continuing to lengthen the tailbone down towards the mat as the frontal hip points lift. We're gonna take a modified half moon, kind of a counter variation of gate pose. I'm gonna ground my left hand down, that shoulders over the wrist, right leg up, right arm to the sky. So I have a hard flex into that right foot. It's like I'm trying to kick the wall. I'm lengthening my tailbone towards that heel and I'm really feeling my outer hip, my gluteus medius turn on. So engaging through there, let it feel good. One more full breath, maybe you lift another inch. And then we're gonna go ahead and inhale back up and bring the hands to the hips. From here, we're gonna take a shoulder thread the needle while that right leg is stretched out. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take our right hand towards the mat, ground it down, and you can adjust it as you need to. We're gonna inhale the left arm out to the side. We're gonna thread it through the right. And then that left ear is coming down towards the mat, or you could use a block for the head if you need to. So a lot of stretch here. Feel free to extend the right arm more forward. So find the stretch into the right inner thigh into the right shoulder and left shoulder. So soften in a few more breaths. One more deep inhale and exhale. We're gonna gently rock or bring that right hand back underneath the shoulder. We'll inhale back up, ground the hands and then come on up, hands to hips. We're gonna release the right leg back to center, and then we're gonna go ahead and take that left leg out to the side for gate pose. So just make sure it's a straight extension from your hip. We'll inhale the arms up and overhead. This time, exhale, bringing the left hand to lightly touch that leg. Right arm to the sky, the gaze wherever it's comfortable for you. Get a nice stretch in that right side body, and it's okay for that right shoulder to lift. Get the stretch. One more full breath. And then we're gonna take the counter variation, a modified half moon pose by grounding the right hand down. You have the shoulder right over the wrist and then you're gonna go ahead and lift the left leg off the mat, a nice hard flex. It might feel a little crampy in that left outer hip, but that's okay. You're working hard, engaging those muscles and strengthening. Lengthen the tailbone towards that heel, frontal hip points lift. One more full breath, maybe you lift a little bit more. And then we'll go ahead and bring the left foot down, coming on up, bringing the hands to the hips. We'll take the shoulder, thread the needle. So we're gonna go ahead and ground that left hand to the mat where it's comfortable. We'll inhale the right arm out to the side, thread it through the left, right ear and temple to the mat. And if things are going well, you can extend the left arm more forward. So feel the, all the sensations in the body here. The inner thigh of that left leg really turning on as it's engaged but stretching. And you find a nice stretch through the right shoulder and the left arm shoulder. Couple more full breaths. If the left arm is extended, we're gonna go ahead and walk it back underneath the shoulder. On your next inhale, you'll go ahead and come back up, grounding the hands, and then bringing the hands back up to the hip. Good job. We'll bring that left knee in, preparing for puppy dog pose. So you're gonna keep the hips high, and you're gonna bring the arms out, and you're gonna go ahead and go ground the forehead down towards the mat. So keep the core engaged here. Lower belly is turned on to support the low back but you're really pushing the hands into the mat, upper outer arms are turned on, really turning on that external rotation of the upper arms. So feel your fingertips really engage into the floor or mat. Feel the tops of the forearms turn on just as much as the under part.
part of your forearms. Real active pose, but getting a nice opening through your thoracic spine. One more full breath. And then as you're ready, we're going to inhale on up, walk those hands back, preparing for downward facing dog. So spread the fingers wide, tuck the toes under as you exhale, the hips are going to come up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana. So really pushing the hands down and away and gripping into the fingertips, the knuckles, everywhere. Feel the lift of the forearms. Nice job with those arms. Upper outer arms are turning on. And equally so, the tops of the thighs are drawing back and up. Frontal hip points lift. You feel that engagement of the lower belly as those front ribs hug in. Relaxing through the sides of the neck and the jaw. Feel really good in your down dog pose, knowing that you can bend the knees as much as you need to. We're going to place a bend into the left knee and try to ground that right heel down a little bit more. So you're going to feel a stretch somewhere in your right leg. For everyone, it's a little different, but feel it really good here as we hold static. One more full breath. And then we're going to switch. We'll bend into that right knee, grounding the left heel down and really feel that nice stretch somewhere in your left leg. Continuing to really root the hands down and away, pushing into every area of the hand. And notice as you press into the fingertips, you turn on the top part of the forearm. We're going to ground both heels down towards the mat. Coming into a figure four shape, if you are able to open up through the outer hips a little more. So I'm going to take my right foot and ankle, cross it over the top of the thigh, and I'm going to bend a lot through that left knee. So try not to place your shin and calf on the knee joint. Try to do it above the knee joint. So holding static here, a couple more breaths, feeling the stretch into the right outer hip. And then we'll go ahead and release the right foot to the mat. Taking that on the other side, we're going to take the left foot and ankle, cross it over the right thigh, bend generously into the right knee, making sure your shin and your calf are not resting on the knee joint, but just above it onto the thigh. Feel the opening into your left outer hip and gluteus medius. One more deep full breath. And release the left foot to the mat. Awesome job. We're going to inhale into plank pose and we're going to hold. Rooting the hands down into the earth. Feel your fingertips turn on as well. And energetically, the wrists draw back towards the toes. So turn on your serratus interior side bodies to stabilize through the shoulder. Get a long line of energy, crown of the head through the heels. Frontal hip points lift, one more full breath. And exhale, tops of the thighs will bring you back into downward facing dog. So good, we're gonna do that two more times, strengthening in our plank pose. So inhale, slow and controlled, coming into plank. Such a nice pose to strengthen all of our core. So again, the hands rooting into the earth, grounded. Shoulder heads are drawing back. Energetically, those wrists draw back towards the toes. Feel those side bodies turn on. Frontal hip points lift a little bit, so it feels like the tailbone lengthens towards the heels. You have strong legs and strong arms. One more full breath. Tops of the thighs draw you back. Downward facing dog. Feel everything turning on here. One more full round. And just know you can always drop to the knees if you haven't already if you need to in your body. So engaging everything that we've done, hands down, energetically the wrists draw back towards the toes, shoulder heads draw back, navel draws to spine, frontal hip points lift, long line of energy through the crown of the head and the feet. One more full breath. And then tops of the thighs draw you back, downward facing dog. Another full inhalation and exhalation in your Adho Mukha Svanasana. Lengthening through the spine, opening through the hamstrings. And then we're gonna go ahead and walk our feet up towards the hands into a forward fold. And you may need your block here if you need, if you have 
tight hamstrings. We're going to cross the right foot over the left and walk the fingertips over towards the right side of the mat. Again, your hands can be on the calves and shins or a block if they don't reach to the mat. Once you find a point of stretch, you're going to release the top of the head towards the mat. So in my body, I feel it in that left outer hip into the IT band that joins through the glute towards the knee, the outer part of the leg. Everybody feels it a little different. Then we're going to walk the fingertips to center. We're going to uncross and we're going to cross the left foot over the right and walk the fingertips towards the left corner of the mat left side of the mat, or you can grab onto your calves and shins or a block. You can bend the knees as much as you need to release the crown of the head towards the mat, feeling the stretch now into that outer right leg and hip. Hmm. We're going to go ahead and walk the hands to center. We're going to bring the feet together, hands to the hips on the next inhale with a flat back. We'll come up to standing. Good work, everybody. Nice warm up, really opening up through the body. And now you're going to find your blocks or your books and bring them towards the center of your mat. We're going to use them to stand on for our half sun salutations. So in doing so, we make our body taller and we're able to get a greater stretch through the hamstrings. So finding your feet centered on your blocks. Tailbone is lengthening down as those frontal hip points lift and find a strong Tadasana here. Find a point of focus. Maybe close your eyes here. I'm grounded and grateful. I'm grounded and grateful. Noticing if you tend to lock out through the knees, always a little micro bend is a good idea. We'll softly open the eyes. We're going to inhale the arms up and overhead. We're going to fold at the hip crease as the tops of the thighs press down as you come down into Uttanasana. Inhaling for your half lift, Ardha Uttanasana. And then exhale, Uttanasana. Root through the feet, the arms come strongly to the sides, up and overhead. Exhale, hands to heart, those front ribs knit together. Two more full rounds. Inhaling up. Exhale, push the tops of the thighs, extend through the spine as you come on down. Inhaling, half lift, turn on those quads, engage those legs. And then exhale, forward fold. Rooting through the feet, sweeping the arms up and overhead. Gaze where it's comfortable. Exhale, hands to heart, those front ribs hug in. One more full round with your breath, inhaling up. Exhale, lead with that heart, extend through the spine, nice forward fold, tops of the thighs, press back. Inhaling, half lift, turn on those quads, strong legs. Exhale, fold, release it in. Root through the feet, sweep the arms all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart, samasthi tihi. Nice job. We're going to go ahead and step off the blocks gently. You're going to have them towards the top of the mat and we'll find Tadasana Mountain Pose at the top of the mat. Feel how you feel a little bit taller now that we're off of the blocks. Maybe you rock back and forth on the feet or side to side, just finding your center. Feel yourself rooted into the earth. We'll inhale the arms up and overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Lead with that heart as you come on down. Inhaling for your half lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, we're going to ground the hands. We're going to take the right leg back. We're going to go ahead and release the right knee to the mat. And we're going to inhale the arms up and overhead. Crescent B pose. We're going to go ahead and extend the arms back. Really engage that back body here, drawing those arms together. Let it feel good. And then we're going to release the right hand to the mat and the left arm to the sky for a twist. If you feel like you want a little bit more, you can walk that front foot forward or that right leg back. Finding a nice twist, keeping the integrity of the pose as that left knee tracks over the ankle. One more full breath here. 
then we're going to exhale the left hand to the mat and we're going to find both blocks or books on the inside of the left foot finding a nice low lunge lizard you can ground the hands to the blocks the blocks have multiple levels if you need them higher feel free to stay upright or come on down to the forearms for a nice opening through the inner thighs and the outer hips a lot of sensation in this pose we want to relax through the jaw the face and the neck to really open up through the body a few more breaths here inhale peace and exhale gratitude one more full breath And then we're going to go ahead and come on up onto the hands, release the low lunge lizard, coming into our half split. So we're going to go ahead and flex into that left foot, a little micro bend into the knee. I like to stay upright for this pose just to create a little space between the pelvis and the thigh. We'll take a nice deep inhale and pitch forward. So there's three hamstring muscles. As you press the heel onto the mat and energetically draw back towards the glute, you feel that main hamstring muscle turn on and then we're just going to experiment by rotating the leg or the foot out to the left and then internally to center so find this stretch in the outer muscles of the hamstring so notice what feels good for you maybe you hold or just continually move the foot toward midline and out into external rotation one more full round here And then we'll go ahead and inhale on up. We'll ground the left foot to the mat. Blocks can come off to the side. We're gonna release back into low lunge and we're gonna take the left leg up and back, three-legged downward facing dog. So we have a neutral pelvis here, a nice flex into that foot. And we're gonna work our core a little bit. We're gonna exhale that knee in towards the nose. You're gonna round through the back. We're gonna inhale back. We're going to take that knee to the same shoulder on that left side, crunch it in, inhale back, and then cross the body, that knee over towards the right shoulder. Get a little twist, inhale back, and then we'll bring the foot back to the mat, downward facing dog. We're going to inhale into plank pose. Feel free to drop to the knees if you need to. We're going to exhale through chaturanga all the way down to the mat. You're going to release the tops of the feet, push through the tops of the feet, kneecaps lift as you inhale for a low cobra, the elbows hug in. Exhale back down. We're going to tuck the toes. You're going to lift through half or full plank and then exhale, downward facing dog. Another full inhale and exhale here. We're going to float the right leg up and back, three-legged downward facing dog. Hug in with that left thigh and hip, and then we'll exhale, bring that right foot up between the hands for your low lunge. Gently releasing the left knee to the mat. We'll inhale on up into crescent B pose. We're gonna exhale, drawing the arms back, really turning on the back body muscles here. And then we'll bring the left hand to the mat, right arm to the sky for a twist. So again, feel free to Adjust your stance to get a deeper variation of the pose. One more full breath. We'll exhale the right hand to the mat. Bring both blocks on the inside of the right foot, preparing for our low lunge lizard. So again, adjusting the blocks to your height. You can lengthen your stance, just making sure that front knee is over the ankle, just keeping the integrity of the pose. And we'll come on down onto the forearms or stay upright. So relax as much as you can here, breathing deep, bringing to mind expressions of gratitude that you want to share to others today. That person you may have thought of at the very beginning of class, maybe some other people come to mind. Who do you need to thank today? Letting our thanks be specific and frequent, but yet super genuine. Hmm. Two more full breaths. One more deep inhale. 
and exhale. We're gonna go ahead and transition back up if you are down, coming into that half split, Ardha Hanuman. So flex into the right foot this time, little micro bend into the knee. We're gonna take that nice deep inhale, keep the space between the thigh and the pelvis as you pitch forward. So once we're there, just really rooting the right heel into the mat, energetically drawing it back towards that right glute. So feeling the main hamstring muscle turn on. And once you have that, feel free to experiment with rotating the foot outward and then into midline, stretching through the outer hamstring muscle and the one that's closer towards the medial line. Let it feel good in your body as we open up Work with your breath. One more full inhale and exhale. Continuing to draw that navel in towards the spine, protecting your low back. Drawing the foot back to center, we'll arise and bring that foot back to the mat. Moving the blocks out towards the side, we'll release back to low lunge by tucking the back toes under, lifting the left knee off the mat. We'll go ahead and bring that right leg up and back three-legged downward facing dog. Hug in with that left thigh and hip. We'll exhale the knee in towards the nose, really round through your spine. We'll inhale back, knee over towards that right shoulder, same side, crunch it in. Inhale back, exhale, cross the body, knee over towards that left shoulder, and inhale back, beautiful. We'll take the foot to the mat, downward facing dog. Inhale into plank pose, drop to the knees if you need to. Exhale through chaturanga. Inhaling low cobra, upward facing dog if you're ready. Transitioning through plank if you're in low cobra. We'll exhale downward facing dog. Good job everyone. Nice deep inhale here. And exhale. Remembering to push the hands down and away, gripping into the fingertips. Feel all of your arm turn on. We're going to bend into the knees. You're going to gaze forward. You're going to step or float to the top of the mat. Inhaling for the half lift and exhale forward fold. Root through the feet, sweep the arms all the way up and overhead. Exhale, hands to heart, front ribs hug in. We're going to do two rounds of classic sun salutation A. I'm going to cue stepping back, but feel free to jump back, jump forward, Take handstand variations, anything you like to do in that flow. So again, working with your breath, two rounds, and then we will meet at the top of the mat. We're gonna inhale the arms up and overhead. Exhale, forward fold, lead with that heart. Inhaling for your half lift. Exhale, bend the knees, plant the hands. Right leg will come back, followed by the left. We'll exhale through Chaturanga. Feel free to take low cobra, upward facing dog on the inhalation. You'll transition through plank if you are in that low cobra and we'll all meet in downward facing dog. The left foot will come up between the hands, followed by the right. Inhaling for the half lift, nice long spine. Exhale, fold. Root to the feet, sweep the arms all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart, front ribs hug in, engage the core. Other side, inhaling up. We'll exhale, forward fold. Inhaling for the half lift, turn on those quadriceps. Exhale, bend the knees, plant the hands, left leg back this time, followed by the right. Dropping to the knees if you need to. Exhale through Chaturanga. Inhale, low cobra, upward facing dog, strong legs. We'll transition through plank if you're in low cobra, all meeting in downward facing dog. We'll go ahead and take that right foot up between the hands, followed by the left. Inhaling for the half lift and exhale, fold. Root through the feet, sweep the arms all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart, we'll all meet in Tadasana pose. Beautiful job, we're gonna add on here into Utkatasana fierce pose. So you may wanna squat down, bring the hands to the outsides of the feet and then draw the arms up. 
So classically, uh, feet are together, but most people like to have them hip width distance. So again, find what's good in your body. Lengthening through the arms, the shins shift back in space, frontal hip points lift. One more full breath. Squat down a little bit more, and then exhale forward fold. We're going to inhale for the half lift. Exhale, bend the knees, plant the hands. We're going to take that right leg back. We're going to gently release the right knee to the mat, inhaling up for crescent B pose. We're going to exhale, draw the arms back, turn on that back body, and we're going to tuck the right toes under and lift up into full Anjane Asana. Good work. We're going to inhale the arms up and overhead, and we're going to take a twist to the left, right arm forward, left arm back. So the left thigh is drawing back and in and the inner thighs are hugging together. You have the option of staying here or transitioning into revolved half moon. So you would shift and lift, right leg comes off of the mat, nice hard flex. The right hand draws to the mat or you can try to float, left arm to the sky. So really finding that engagement in towards midline, little micro bend into the left knee. One more full breath if you're here. And then we'll go ahead and transition back to that twisted crescent pose. Nice work. We're gonna windmill the arms, seal the right foot down, coming into warrior two. So heel to heel alignment usually works best in most bodies. Finding the arms out to the side, a nice bend into that front knee. I'm going to have you go ahead and bend into the back knee and then notice if you can draw that left thigh back and in a little bit more and then straighten through the back leg. Find a little more freedom into that lower back. Finding your solid Virabhadrasana too. Frontal hip points lift. Arms are strong. Energetically, the heels are drawing together. So engage the inner thighs as much as those outer thighs. We're gonna flip the front palm, taking our reverse warrior, Viparita Virabhadrasana. So keep the generous bend into that front knee. Work that leg, lengthen through that side body. One more full breath. Then we're gonna inhale back to warrior two Transitioning into side angle pose, Parsva Konasana. Can keep the arm on the thigh. Today I'm going to float my arm and really resist that inner thigh so that I can wrap that left thigh down and under. And I'm drawing my shoulders just a little bit away from my ears to create some space in the sides of the neck. One more full breath, strong pose. And then we're going to straighten the leg for Trikonasana. Hands can be on the shins, the inside, the outside of the foot, on the block or the book. Feel nice lengthening through both side bodies. I like to feel my left top of the thigh or hip drawing back towards that back heel. Again, creating a little more space and freedom into that low back. One more full breath. And we're gonna go ahead and reverse our triangle. Get a nice stretch into that left side body. And then we're gonna go ahead and place a bend into the front knee, returning back to Virabhadrasana two. Strong warrior two, option to stay here or take Ardha Chandrasana half moon pose. You would shift and lift. You can have that block if you need it. The hand grounds down to the mat, or you can try to float. Nice flex into that foot, reaching back for that wall. Strong, strong pose. Little movement of that standing foot and ankle is normal and strengthens the joint and the muscles. Little micro bend into that left knee helps. One more full breath with grace and ease returning to Virabhadrasana too. Find your focus. Breathe, relax, notice and choose. Often one I like to come to, just choosing that focus. We'll cartwheel the hands to the mat. 
We're gonna go ahead and take the left leg up and back, three-legged downward facing dog. Hug in with that right thigh and hip. We're gonna exhale, knee in towards the nose, crunch it in. Inhale back, knee to the same shoulder, left side. Inhale back, one more knee over towards that right shoulder, cross it over. Inhale back, exhale, foot to the mat, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Option to stay here, or work through your Ardha Vinyasa. Inhaling to plank pose, drop to the knees if you need. Exhale through Chaturanga. Inhale, low cobra, upward facing dog. Transitioning through plank if you need to, we'll all meet in downward facing dog. Full inhale here. And exhale. We're gonna float that right leg up and back. Three-legged dog, hug in with that left thigh and hip. Take that right foot up between the hands for the low lunge. Gently releasing the left knee to the mat. We'll inhale the arms up for crescent B pose. We're gonna exhale the arms back into that arrowhead shape. We're gonna tuck the back toes under and lift that knee off of the mat. Anjaneyasana, releasing the arms up and overhead. Sinking into the pose, hugging into midline. One more full breath here, finding your steadiness. We're gonna take that twist to the right. So right arm back, left arm forward. You're welcome to hold here, or we're gonna transition into that revolved half moon. So you'd shift and lift. Left hand will ground down or float, right arm to the sky, strengthening that standing leg, hugging in with that right thigh and hip. One more full breath, and then we'll return back to that twisted crescent. Nice work. So we're gonna windmill the arms, ground the back foot down for warrior two. Again, heel to heel usually works best for most bodies. Sink into that front leg, use that leg, wrapping that right thigh down and under. And to help do so, we're gonna bend into that back knee, and then you can really get the opening, the external rotation in that front leg, and then straighten that back leg strong. Arms out to the side. Energetically, those heels are scrubbing together, activating the adductors, the inner thighs. Strong, strong pose, Virabhadrasana 2. We're going to flip the front palm, taking our reverse warrior, keep the generous bend into the front knee, lightly touching that back arm down. Get the opening into the right side body. Full deep breaths. Then we're going to go ahead and inhale back to Virabhadrasana 2. Transitioning into our side angle, Parsva Konasana. So really keeping the bend into the knee. You can ground the arm on the thigh, left arm to the sky, or you can float that arm and really draw that right thigh down and under a little bit more. Strong pose, lifting up through both side bodies, grounding through that back leg. One more full breath. Straighten through the front leg. Trikonasana. The hand can be where it's comfortable for you. Left arm still to the sky and draw the shoulders away from the he uh, ears. I like to feel the top of that right thigh, that right hip, drawing back towards my back heel, releasing through my low back a little more. One more full breath. And then we're gonna go ahead and release and reverse our triangle. Get a break for the legs, right arm to the sky, lengthening through the side body. And then inhale back, Virabhadrasana two. All those actions we worked with before. Ah, strong arms, lengthen that tailbone down as you lift the frontal hip point. So find the engagement of the core. As you're ready, we're going to shift and lift into half moon pose or welcome to stay in warrior two. You can float or ground the hand down, left arm to the sky, and really a hard flex on that left leg. 
little wiggle wobble of that right ankle and foot is normal. A little micro bend into the knee will help. Find your full expression. One more full breath. And then with grace and ease, coming back to Virabhadrasana too. Strong body. You're a strong warrior. You're grounded and you are grateful. We'll cartwheel the hands to the mat. The right leg will come up and back, three-legged downward facing dog. You're gonna exhale the knee in towards the nose, crunch it in. Inhale back, knee over towards that right shoulder, same side. Inhale back, knee over towards that left shoulder, cross the body. Inhale back, and we'll exhale the foot to the mat, downward facing dog. Option to stay here, take your Ardha Vinyasa. Inhale into plank pose, drop to the knees if you need to. Exhale through Chaturanga. Inhale, low cobra, upward facing dog. Transitioning through plank if you're in that low cobra, tops of the thighs drawing you back, downward facing dog. Another full inhale here. And exhale. Pushing the hands into the mat, fingertips gripping. Feel your top of the forearms turn on. Really engaging those triceps, those upper outer arms, roll back. Tops of the thighs, pressing back. Let it feel good, one more full breath. We're gonna bend into the knees. You're gonna gaze forward. You're gonna step or float to the top of the mat. Inhaling for the half lift, extending through the spine. And exhale, fold. Inhale, Utkatasana, squat down. Arms lift up. Frontal hip points lift. Shins shift back in space. Really strong arms. One more full breath. Lift on up. And then draw the hands to heart center. Good work. We're going to go ahead and we're just going to give ourselves a big hug. So I want you to wrap your arms around your ribs. And then close the eyes. Feel the fullness of your breath. Steady the breath. Full inhales and exhales. Breathe, relax, notice, and choose. You are grounded and grateful. I am grounded and grateful. Inhale peace, exhale gratitude. One more full breath. Inhale peace, exhale gratitude. Softly opening the eyes, feel your foundation. We'll release the arms down by the side. You're gonna grab a block or a book as an option for tree pose. So we're gonna challenge our balance by placing the standing foot on a block or a book. Again, that's optional. If your balance is not the best today, I would just encourage you not to use a block. You can even stand by a wall if needed for the balance. So we're gonna work on that left foot coming up onto the block. And then the right foot is gonna come into your tree pose. So that could either be at the ankle, the calf, or you can draw it up into the inner thigh. So anywhere except that knee joint and feel free to place a micro bend into the left knee. We're gonna draw our hands at heart center and we're gonna draw the arms to the sky and interlace index finger extends to the sky and the thumbs cross. And if you're uh, having a hard time balancing already, you're just gonna stay here if you want that extra challenge, we're just gonna go ahead and try a modified half moon in our tree pose. So I'm gonna go ahead and lean over towards the right, keeping the focus of the gaze forward. I'm gonna inhale back up and then I'm gonna lean over towards the left. Maybe you try that one more time each side. So again, you're gonna feel that standing leg a little bit wobbly and shaky. We're strengthening so much in those ligaments and muscles the joints of the foot and the lower leg. 
And then go ahead, find your full expression of Rikshasana tree pose. Maybe the gaze comes up towards the sky. Again, a classic pose of gratitude. What are you grateful for today? Specifically, your genuine thanks. Allowing yourself to be grateful frequently. And we'll draw the hands back into heart center and release the tree pose on that side. Shake it out. You're going to feel that standing leg really turned on. And then we'll move the block a little bit so we can ground our right foot onto the block. All right. Ah. So find your balance, the right foot on the block. And then you can find your tree on this side and maybe a different variation depending on the external rotation that you have in this leg. Our sides are so different side to side. So find a great place for you anywhere except the knee joint. We'll start with the hands at heart center and the focus forward. We're gonna inhale the arms up. We're gonna interlace the hands, index finger extends to the sky and then you're gonna switch the cross of the thumbs. It's gonna feel awkward, that's okay. Well, frontal hip points lift here. Feel the foot push into the thigh or the leg back into the foot. So find that energetic quality of your tree pose. And then if you want to try the modified half moon, feel free. We'll go ahead and lean over towards the left. Inhale up and then lean over towards the right. Inhale up and you can try that one more time each side. Nice job, everybody. No matter what happens, we're all working the same. You're gonna go ahead and find your full expression of tree pose. Maybe the gaze comes up to the sky. And then again, this side, grateful for all the challenges that are happening right now in your life. Even being grateful for those, knowing that we're learning, knowing that everything has a purpose and it's time. And we'll draw the hands back down into heart center. Good work. We're gently going to come off the block, shake it out. We're going to bring both of our blocks or books on the highest level just in front of us here. We're just going to have them in case we need them. We're going to work into uh, standing figure four into a little bit of a twist and then an arm balance called grasshopper or Parsva Bhuja Dandasana. Some people like to call it dragonfly. So just experimenting with things today. Again, this is an all levels class. So you're welcome to stay with the standing figure four. At any time, you can sit on your blocks in a squat, Malasana squat, or take figure four seated down on the floor. So, so many options here. So we're just here to play a little bit, find a little bit of challenge and a little bit of uh, arm balancing and weight into, um, weight bearing into our uh, bones. So we'll go ahead and find our figure four standing to begin. We're gonna take that left foot, we're gonna cross it over the right thigh, and we're gonna go ahead and squat down. And the blocks are here for you. If you need them for balance, they're here for you. So feel free to use them. So figure four, you're already feeling it in that left outer hip. I'm gonna have you take the right hand to the flexed left foot and just give it a nice push and feel how you're getting even a little more opening in that left outer hip. We're going to try a nice little twisting challenge here. It's not easy, so feel free to just keep with the right hand on that left foot. We're going to bring the hands to heart center and try to bring that left elbow into the arch of that left foot. And then push into the hands and find a nice twist. And again, you can bend that right knee as much as you need. I have a feeling if I take my gaze to the right side, I will fall over. So I'm keeping my gaze towards the bottom of the mat or just straight down. But I'm feeling a beautiful lengthening and twist through my side bodies, which is needed for grasshopper pose, such a hip opener and a twist at the same time. One more full breath. Then we're gonna return to center. I'm gonna hold on to my blocks. And this may or may not be good for your knee. So again, feel free to just come and sit on the blocks in a squat if you need to. So I'm coming into toe squat to come into that grasshopper shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and bend into the right knee and safely come down into my toe squat. Now, very challenging pose. I find toe squat not easy at all. So grounding the hands into something and we will work towards grasshopper. This is a pose that's not in my regular practice. 
It's fun to play with and we'll see what happens. Again, feel free to sit on your blocks or take figure four seated on the mat. So to come into this pose, we're gonna be taking that twisting action by taking the arms over towards the right side. All right, here we are. And the goal is to, and you can always use the blocks underneath the hands if you have shorter arms. If you have longer arms, it's always easier, I feel, to get into those arm balances. So the goal here is we're gonna to try to root this left foot into the back of that left tricep. So that's where the twisting action comes in. So the higher you can get the foot onto that arm, the easier this pose will be. So here we go. Next will be bringing the arms into a chaturanga shape and building that shelf. Classically, you're just using the one arm to support the leg and the foot that's there. I may try to use both arms as a shelf for today, just to try to demo. So I'm gonna go ahead and build that shelf. I'm gonna lean into it. I'm gonna keep that foot on the back of that tricep and extend the right foot out. There we go. So that's grasshopper pose. I'm gonna try one more time. Maybe I can just root on that front arm. A lot of it is like the foot slips off the back of the arm, so make sure you don't use lotion on your body at all. So finding that foot on the tricep, I will try to root it down, find the shelf with the arms, and then the left leg out. Nice. Good work, everybody. Wherever you're at, you will come back down. And we're gonna take a nice forward fold, Pada Hastasana, just to relieve the wrist a little bit and to lengthen out through the hamstrings. So you'll find a forward fold and we're going to go ahead and take the hands underneath the feet. Feet are about hip width distance, a little bit wider if you need. Take a nice deep inhale and then exhale, bend the knees as much as you need and find your fold. Elbows point out towards the sides, lengthen down, massage the toes into the wrists. Feel Huge opening to one side of the body, and we'll be working the other side next. Hmm. All right, we're going to release the hands. You're going to go ahead and place a bend into the knees, hands to the hips, and come on up. Nice work. So we're going to take that to the other side. Here we go. I'm going to bring the blocks in front of me in case I need them for balance. Figure four on that other side. So again, take what's good for you today. This is a practice, not a perfect, and it's a journey. So each and every day our body shows up different. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, take the right foot on the left thigh, I'm gonna bend down into my figure four. Again, those blocks are there for you if you need them for the hands. Hmm. Settling in here for a few breaths. And we're gonna go ahead and take that left hand to the right foot and give it a nice push. You're gonna feel a little bit more opening into that right outer hip. Then we're gonna work into that optional twist. I'm gonna bring the hands to heart. I'm gonna to lean towards my left here and try to root that right elbow into that right foot. Pushing the palms together. Feel a stretch in the hip and feel the twist in the side bodies. I'm gonna keep my gaze down, but you're welcome to take that gaze over to the left side. Couple more full deep breaths. Preparing the body. And then we'll come back to center. Working into toe squat, you're welcome to sit on the blocks for a malasana squat if this is too much for your knees. So we're gonna go ahead and bend into the left knee and come on down. There we go. Toe squat is definitely a challenge. I think I might have to shift back in space for room here. So feel free to adjust as you need. All right, so working into grasshopper on this side. I think I'll move the blocks out of the way so you can see. Go. So you can tell a lot of this pose also is your ankle and foot flexibility and mobility. So much to this pose that we're working. So we're going to work on taking the arms over to the left side. Better move my hair out of the way. Oops. <laughs> Here we go. 
So I will try both arms to start and I really want to get that right foot as high as I can on that right tricep. Feel free to use the blocks underneath the hands if your arms are shorter. You're going to find the chaturanga arms. I'm going to use both arms as a shelf to start. Push my foot into that tricep and then the left leg will come out to the side and flex into the foot. There we go. Grasshopper pose. Parzva, Bhuja, Dandasana. Also dragonfly, some people like to call it. All right, I'm gonna try one more time on one arm, not using both arms as a shelf. Feel free to play. You can always take the seated figure four if you'd like. Arms to the left, foot on the back of that tricep. Bending into the arms. Leaning into it. Extending the left leg. There we go. Grasshopper pose. It's kind of fun. I like it. We'll draw the foot in. Come on down. And we're all going to transition into Malasana squat. So again, feel free to sit on the block. Whew, a lot of work there. Good job. No matter what you did, you're working the same things through all the extensions of those poses. Ah, Malasana squat. Five full breaths. Drawing the hands together. Again, feel free to sit on the blocks. Again, some people's feet are straight out. Some are pointed out. Again, a lot of it depends on how your thigh bone hooks into your hip bone. It's all good. Nice release and neutrality through the lower back. Maybe you take your gaze down, just relaxing through the neck. Drawing the hands into heart. You're grounded and grateful. You're grounded and grateful. One more full breath. Hmm. We'll release the hands. We're going to come down onto our bottoms. We're going to take Mariachi Asana three. We're going to bend into the left knee. We're going to flex into the right foot and we're going to take the left arm behind and get a nice tall spine. We're going to inhale the right arm up and you can either hug around that knee or bring the arm on the outside of that leg. So get a nice lengthening through the side bodies and twist through the spine. So as you inhale, lengthen through both side bodies. Exhale, rotate from the low belly, mid belly, and chest. One more full breath. And then we're going to go ahead and unwind. We're going to play with baby grasshopper. So if you weren't able to come into the full grasshopper variation, maybe baby might be one for you. So it's just fun to play with. We're going to take the right, or excuse me, the left foot over the right leg. From here, I'm going to lean to my right. And I'm going to point that left foot just kind of straight forward. I'm kind of leaning on that right hip. From here, the right arm takes a bend like a chaturanga arm, and you're going to try to reach for the inside or the out, outside, or the, the inside or the outside of that right foot. So once you have that, and again, a lot of this is how long your arms are, so you may not be able to reach, you might be able to grab your calf or shin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift that leg up with my hand, and then I'm going to find the chaturanga arm and find baby grasshopper. There you go. Something else to play with. We'll go ahead and release, switch sides. Place a bend into the right knee. Upright onto those sit bones. A flex into the left foot. Right arm's gonna come behind. We're gonna inhale the left arm up. Can wrap around the knee or take the arm on the outside of the leg. Again, lengthening through the side bodies here as you inhale. And exhale, rotating low belly, mid belly, and chest. Imagine somebody just behind you, keeping your tall posture and just drawing that right shoulder back a little bit. One more full breath. And then we're gonna go ahead and release that. We'll work baby grasshopper on this side. So we're gonna cross the foot over. I'm gonna lean onto my left hip. My foot is gonna try to point straight out to the side and then I have a bent 
left arm chaturanga. Right arm is going to try to reach for the foot. If not, you can reach the calf or the shin. And I'm going to go ahead and bend into the arm. I'm going to lift the leg, lift my seat, and find baby grasshopper. One more full breath. And then come on down. <laughs> nice job, everybody. Shaking it out. <sighs> All right, so we're going to take a 90-90 seat stretch with a twist. So I'm going to bring my left leg forward and my right leg behind me. So again, about a 90-90 degree opening here. And the first option is just to fold forward slightly over the right leg. So that's option one. You're welcome to stay here. You can always use those blocks to rest the arms on. We're going to try to take a little twist to honor your body. If it doesn't feel good, you're going to come on out. You can start by taking the right hand to the left foot and giving it a nice little push. You're going to feel a little more opening into that left outer hip. Or we're going to go ahead and take the left elbow into the arch of that right left foot. Bring the palms together and find an amazing twist. I love this twist. So really get a nice opening everywhere. Again, if it doesn't feel good for your body, come back out just to the classic 90-90 stretch. Hmm. One more full breath. We'll go ahead and return to center. And we're gonna bring that right leg forward for Janu Shirsasana. And I'm gonna give you a little bit different variation today. We're gonna to take the right foot and ankle underneath that right knee. So it helps us not hyperextend through that knee and we're gonna get a forward fold with a little bit of a wider angle in that leg. We're gonna inhale the arms up. We'll angle over the right leg, reach for the toes if you can, extend through the spine and then sink in. So for me, I feel it more into my right leg and the outer right hip and a little bit into the low back and left hip. Hmm. One more full breath. And we're gonna go ahead and inhale on up. We're gonna take the 90-90 stretch with the right leg forward. So right leg will come forward, left leg's gonna release back. So again, find a nice spot for you and you're welcome just to pitch forward and find a nice stretch mainly into that right outer hip. We're gonna work in towards the twist. So that left hand will come to the right foot to start. Just give it a little push. And you'll find the outer hip. Or we can draw that right elbow into the right arch of the foot. Bring the palms together, push into the palms and find a beautiful twist over towards that left side. So again, those same actions of inhaling, lengthening through both side bodies. Exhale, rotate from low belly mid belly and chest. A couple more breaths, it should feel good. One more deep inhale and exhale. We're going to go ahead and return back to center. We're going to go ahead and take the left leg forward and we're going to do the different variation of a Janu Sursasana by bringing the right foot and ankle underneath the left knee. So you got a little bit of wider of an angle here, a flex into the left foot. Take a nice deep inhale in, extend out and forward fold. Find a nice, nice stretch wherever your body needs it. For me, it's mainly that left leg and outer hip, a little bit into my low back and the right outer hip. Relax the head, lengthen the crown of the head forward. Two more deep full breaths. And we're going to go ahead and inhale on up. We're going to take both legs forward. We're going to take a modified Paschimottanasana yin style. So I'm going to go ahead and take my arms underneath my hamstrings. I can bend the knees or lengthen them out. And I'm going to take a nice deep inhale. I'm going to round my spine this time into the fold. Full deep breaths. I feel a beautiful stretch into my low back, a little bit into my hamstrings. 
inhale peace, exhale gratitude. So with this shape, I like to just let my toes relax. They're not flexed. I just let them do whatever they feel like doing. Inhale peace, exhale gratitude. One more deep, full breath. We're going to inhale on up. We're going to be grabbing a block. We're going to be coming into a pelvis reset. Just a nice way to stabilize through the pelvis and the lower back. So we're going to come down onto our back like we're going to be coming into a bridge pose. So just go ahead and roll on down. If you have a book, that'll work as well. You're going to find the widest part of your block. And first of all, you're going to bring your feet together. So it feels a little awkward. So our feet are not hip width distance. Our feet are together. And we're gonna bring the widest part of the block between the knees. The arms are down by your sides, kind of gripping into the mat and feel free to hold on to the edges of the mat if you'd like. So we're gonna take a rocking action. So the hips lift off. I'm gonna to rock to the right and the left 10 times. So you may feel a little shift in your pelvis. You may not, and it's all good. Just find that rocking action 10 times per side. So work with your breath here. Again, stabilizing through the torso and having your hands rooted down into the mat. Keeping the feet together and just rocking back and forth. So you're gonna feel your glutes lift off, your hips lift off, but just find that rocking action with the wide block and you're squeezing into that block with the knees. Probably a couple more each side. And then you'll pause at center and just notice any sensations you might be feeling. And we're gonna do that again, but we're gonna take the block this time on its most narrow level. So I'm gonna shift my heels back because I kind of shifted forward. My feet are still together and I have the block narrow ways between the knees. Do the same action here, 10 rocks each side, but you have a more narrow stance now with the legs. So you're hugging into the block, you're rocking side to side. Find your rhythm and pace with your breath. Remember to hug in the block, try not to shift the block keeping the feet together. About three more rocks here. Last round. Nice work. You're going to release the block to the side. We're going to take a next. So the arms are going to come out into a T. You're going to go ahead and be twisting to the right. So I like to shift my hips a little to the left to find my spine down the center of the mat, hug the knees in, and then bring the knees over towards the right. So a lot of options here. You can take that right hand to the outside of the left thigh and give yourself a little adjustment yourself. And then you can gaze over that left shoulder if that feels good for you. And just feeling the bottom of that left shoulder blade reaching towards the left elbow to find that finite twist in the upper back. A few more breaths here. And then we're gonna go ahead and release and come back to center. Feel free to take a full body stretch or hug the knees into the chest in between sides. We're gonna be taking that twist to the left. So I'm going to shift my hips a little to the right, hug the knees on over to the left. I'm going to take the left hand to the outside of the right thigh to give myself a little adjustment and then you can gaze over that right shoulder if you'd like, drawing the bottom of the right shoulder blade towards the right elbow to find a little more twist in that thoracic spine. A few more breaths here. Beginning to lengthen the exhalation naturally relaxes our nervous system. Our calm and connect system, and parasympathetic nervous system. One more full breath. 
Really lengthening out those exhalations. And then we're gonna inhale back to center. All right, one more little energy reset technique before Shavasana. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my heels off of my mat more on a smooth surface. It does work on the mat or the carpeting if you're on carpeting and you're gonna come on down to your back. You may wanna watch me here demonstrate what we're gonna do for about a minute. It's an energy reset rock. And what it does, it helps to relax the psoas muscle deep into that hip flexor area. And it helps to really calm our nervous system and the limbic part of the brain. So you're just gonna have a comfortable place for the hands. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be rocking by flexing and pointing my feet and nodding my head yes. So I'm gonna demo here and then you're gonna settle in and we're gonna do this for about a minute. So as you're ready, you can watch me here. So I'm gonna flex and point and nod my head yes as I'm rocking gently my body back and forth. So you wanna make sure your heels are on a surface to where they won't get any kind of rug burn or anything like that. And just find this action for yourself. You're gonna find your groove. It might become a little more deeper as you get comfortable. So feel free now to join in with me. And we're gonna do this for about a minute. So find your rhythm here. It may take a little bit and then just settle in. Nodding the head, yes. Flexing and pointing the feet. You feel your body shifting back and forth. Full deep breaths. Your feet might get tired, that's okay. Take a break if you need to. It's hard to keep the rhythm sometimes, but just settle into it. A few more breaths. Feel free to continue or just relax. Let everything go. Should be ready for Shavasana. If you need any propping underneath the legs, feel free to take those blocks or books underneath the calves to elevate the legs. Feeling sensations in the body. Letting your breath move as it wishes. Letting the body deeply rest. Shavasana.
You are welcome to stay here as long as you'd like. If you're ready to transition, just bringing your awareness back into the room, back into the breath. Allow your breath to fill the space of your body, your breath of life flowing freely, each breath a purpose. Bring some gentle movement to fingers and toes, maybe rock the head gently side to side. If it feels right, you can take a full body stretch. We're gonna be transitioning by placing a bend into the knees and coming into a fetal position on either side. And just noticing here the effects of the practice. Notice how the body's feeling. The mind's a little more settled and the spirit at peace. You are grounded and grateful. You are grounded and grateful. Taking all this goodness from the practice into the rest of your day. Staying calm and centered no matter what comes your way and remembering to express your thanks and gratitude. That person you thought of in the beginning of class, anybody else, letting your thanks be specific and genuine and frequent. That attitude of gratitude that encourages others so much, including yourself. It is the strength of the arms to make our way into a comfortable seat. Once you find that comfortable seat, just drawing the hands into heart center, Anjali Mudra. Just resting for a few breaths in gratitude. It's always an honor and a pleasure to guide you through your practice. Thank you for sharing your beautiful presence with me. From the light within me, I honor and respect the light within you. Walk in grace and peace and shine bright, my friends. Much love and namaste. Thank you so much for joining me today. You can stay connected with me on my website, love serveinspire.com.